How are you doing, Mel? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I think that person who was trying to get in the last meeting. Oh my God, so noisy. Looks like we'll have someone new today. Who's that? Just following up with him. What happened? What, who's, who's screaming? How's the mad? How's the mad gigs up? I'm sorry. Uh, the the mad gigs app, the TikTok alternative. Oh, the uh, the mad gigs. Yeah. Very good. I signed up for the beta. <laughs> Thank you, though. We we'll, we'll, we'll appreciate the support, but we 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 still have a cup. Uh, Two months to wait. Ah, okay. Uh, it would in two months we'll be able to deliver. How's your project? Well, I'm. I I I just read. I'm reading more inventor books. I just finished uh, two Stephen Key books and. And uh, one by John Rizvi also. And, uh, I have, I now have three, uh, three clients, two of them in the inventor industry. And one of them is uh, the, the one I'm inviting to this meeting. Hmm. And hopefully I pull, pull my resources together and forward part of that is enrolling in your courses so. Hey, how guy? How are you doing? Mark, how's it going, Mark? Hello, everyone. How are you doing, Mark? Good. Awesome. So how's the pandemic treating you? Well, it is not. Uh, state of California does, you know, they uh, playing with AB5 law and my Uber riding, you know, 
under the uh, question uh, under the question now but everything else you know look like the same all right <laughs> Holy shit, Ryan, that, I like that, the mustache. I like it. <laughs> well, uh, Ryan, a little bit more practice. And, uh, you know, welcome to the club. <laughs> Seems Ryan looks different each, each time. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, by the way, man. Huh? Ryan is muted. Huh? I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan, where are you right now? Uh, out in Arizona. The, the Wi Fi is good? Yeah, we fixed it last week. Awesome. It was, uh, the Wi-Fi router was, uh, needed to be reset. I see. Yep. What's new? Nothing special. Walking like a, like, like a dog. Yeah. You got a lot going. Lots of going on, but, uh, we will talk later on when yeah. you get back, when you get back from Arizona, I know you may, you may be, do you have actually, do you have time when you in Arizona? Yeah, yeah, you, I have time now that um, the family just left. So my uh, daughter and uh, her mom and I had some guests and they just took off today. So I see. I have some time tonight or tomorrow, probably tomorrow sometime I could, I could chat. That's good. Yeah. Mark, what's new with you? Well, uh, nothing big. Uh, fixing my pitch, uh, working with Forbes Riley every Sunday, you know, and that, you know, then uh, managed to make it uh, short to five phrase. So it's um, start to look more and more. Didn't hear you. Ryan, where are you? Hello, audio. He's asking, where are you? They didn't hear you. Ryan, you need to get your uh, mic working. So who's going to talk about licensing today? Uh, I I will invite Ryan to uh, to share about what he feel uh, what he learned about licensing and licensing, because eventually uh, when I die, Ryan can carry the luggage. <laughs> I guess, but let Ryan try it, and then I will be I'll be the one backing up by backup. Ryan will be the uh, main speaker if, if that's okay. Can you do it? Ryan, you mute your uh, mic. You need to get your mic working. Uh, under the uh, left hand corner, in the bottom, there is a mic. You can click them. with in your Zoom icon. We got uh, Mr. Mike Mona, welcome, Mike. Your, 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 your mic is a milk, so go to the first icon on your bottom, on the left-hand side, click them, you can talk now. Am I there? You can hear no, me? Yes. I can hear you now. I uh, Ryan, how are you? How's your mic? 
Uh oh. Hey, Mike, uh, you have any update? No, I'm terribly frustrated. It's been two months and they're still trying to find a company that'll do it. They had given me original offers of half a million, a million, a million and a half. And then uh, I told them, look, I'm willing to do two million and I want two different designs. They can't find anyone to do the second design, which is the folded one. And now they say the only company they can find is someone will make me 10 million is what I don't want. I don't want 10 million. So there's 10 million money. pieces you're talking about, right? 10 million pieces, right. Which is uh, 2 million is 800 boxes. It's uh, 400 cartons, 800 boxes. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I would not recommend you to do that. Uh, I think I'm going to start looking locally. If, I don't know. I'm, I'm just stymied but frustrated. Understand. <laughs> just just wasting time. Where you, uh, I, I, I thought you are talking to a guy in, uh, uh, in Texas. A company in Texas. And uh, unfortunately the woman I deal with doesn't seem very knowledgeable. Uh, I've worked with the tech guy who did all the, the CAD work for me and got it down right. But, um, I, I don't know. She's just kind of clueless, I think. But I'm sure they're trying to help her, but she just doesn't inspire a lot of optimism. What kind of product is that? Sorry? What kind of product is that? Say again? I think the lady is from China, right? No, the lady is uh, Texan. Oh, Texan. Okay. What kind? What kind of product? What kind of processes are you looking for? It's a it's a, a renovation of the paper toilet seat cover. Not very exciting, but twenty or thirty million are used a day. I see. Well, uh, uh, I can I can share my disappointment with a very very little uh, piece of plastic, uh, which is a little bit smaller than uh, uh, toilet paper. But uh, two companies, uh, which was recommended by, by material manufacturer, cannot give me a suitable quote for third month. For how long? Uh, almost three months. Yeah. Well, I don't understand the reason for that. You know, I was manufacturing engineer myself. Uh, so for me, if I get in project, uh, well, three days max, uh, even if I need to have some material, some other sources, you know that. But uh, but I just waiting and waiting, you know. Just, uh, I managed to produce the prototype myself. And my only problem, you know, I need die cutting because of uh, laser cutting leaving a, a residue. I made the terrible uh, request of having colored paper rather than white. And it's like, oh my gosh, you can't do that. I don't know why you can't get, anyway. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of was available always every holiday for uh, packing material uh, uh, for gift baskets. Yeah, seems simple enough. Yes. So that's strange. Yeah, it is. All right, uh, we shall start. Uh, Ryan, um, uh, we try to talk about licensing and slicensing. Uh, I think that uh, will help us to uh, understand why we have opportunity as a inventor can, can, can license to multi different licensee to generate uh, 
income from your idea or from your patent, uh, patented uh, concept. Um, do, you, do you want to uh, adjust this, what your uh, understanding is? And then uh, if people have questions, I can adjust, or if later on I can uh, uh, add the whatever uh, substance I can add. But uh, there is a newcomer, uh, uh, Gerald, Key, Gerald, Gerald Lee, or um, welcome. It is uh, Emmanuel's friend, right? Uh, Emmanuel, your, uh, your mic is uh, muted. If you want to say something, then you can click your, your mic. But Ryan, go ahead. Uh, what you, uh, your understanding about uh, licensing and slicensing. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you guys can hear me, right? Yes. I, my audio and uh, my microphone and speaker cut out a little earlier. Um, so thanks, Brian. And uh, let's see here. Welcome to the ID to Millions Zoominar put on by Brian Zhang. Um, tonight, yeah, with licensing and slicensing, I think one thing I've learned in the past two years is that there's multiple ways to bring a product to market. And um, there's pros and cons to all of them. And um, licensing is is the common term that people use. And that's, you know, what you might learn from certain programs. Uh, but Brian kind of coined this term slicensing, which is if you do, you know, like if a, if a company wants to um, buy your product, buy your intellectual property and give you a royalty, which is licensing, um, you want to be careful not to give them exclusive rights and complete control over your product because then you have no, way, no other ways of profiting from your product. You basically just signed your product completely away and now you, uh, you have to move on to your next product because there's nothing else that you can do with this one. So slicing, like Brian talks about, is being smart about the contracts that you get into. And um, if you do want to license your product or your idea, that you don't give exclusive rights. You um, give rights to a certain market, maybe say just the Europe, Europe market, or maybe just the East, Eastern United States, or only in um, grocery stores or something like that. You basically will license your idea out, but then you'll also keep a lot of opportunity for yourself to be able to profit from your idea as well. So that way you can license some, you can get royalties, but then you could also bring your product to market yourself and have a certain piece of the market for that. Or maybe you license out um, sort of your low end model and you sell and produce the high end model you're on your own. So um, licensing is a great thing uh, for people that don't, let's see here, you know, here's the deal with licensing. You're not going to make as much money if your product is successful, but you also don't have to put a lot of money in. So it's, um, you know, bigger, the risk, bigger, the risk, the bigger, the reward. This is kind of a lower risk thing and it's a lower reward thing because your, um, your, what do you call it? Your royalties are only going to be maybe around 5%, like three to 7%, sometimes even only 1%, um, but it can go higher. It depends on how good your product is, depends if it's a niche market, um, you know, it depends on a lot of things. So um, um, licensing and slicing is great, in my opinion, for people that don't have the funds and have no way of getting funds to bring a product to your market yourself. Now. You may not have funds, but there are ways to get funds to bring the product to market yourself. So just because you don't have funds doesn't mean you have to license and can't bring it to market yourself. Just know that you can find investors, you can get lenders. Um, there's a lot of ways to make that work. You can, you know, pitch it to people. Um, you know, you could you could bootstrap it, shoestring budget, make a few, sell them, prove your prove the concept, and then order more. Um, once you've proven your concept, then you can actually find investors easier because you've shown them that, hey, look, people are buying this thing. And um, so you can go from there. So don't think that just because you may not have a lot of funds that you have to go the licensing route. Uh, Brian and, you know, Brian has a lot of insight on how you can bootstrap or find the funds to bring it to market yourself. But let's see, getting back to licensing. Um, 
licensing, uh, let's see here. One of the biggest misnomers is that all licensing contracts are generally the same. They can be, there is kind of a run, in the, run of the mill contract, but if you're not smart about the contract that you, that you uh, make with a potential licensee, they can screw you. Um, so you want to be dot all your I's, cross all your T's. If you do get into a contract, <clears throat> they will try to sneak stuff in there and a contract will be the, a negotiation. So it'll be a back and forth. Right. You know, they offer you, you counter offer, um, and you want to make sure that you have an attorney check it out or someone that really, you know, someone that's done licensing before, um, to make sure that, that it's a fair contract. Um, I know quite a few people that have gotten licensed deals. They were super excited. They just trusted the company because the company sort of put, put one over them. And it turned out that the company actually totally screwed them and they made no money. on it. Um, so that's one big thing is don't just go in thinking that you're going to find a licensee. And once you find one, you can totally trust them. Um, now going to how do you find a licensee? There's quite a few ways. Um, let's see here, you know, you really just, you've got to figure, you've got to do a lot of research on your product just because you're going to sell your idea. Doesn't mean that you just have to go find a company and pitch it to them and hopefully they'll, you know, sign on. There's a lot of work you should do to figure out what the right company is and to figure out how, you, how to sell your idea. You basically have to go to that company and that, um, you know, the people within that company and prove to them that your product is a good product and will sell. So you've got to figure out, you know, some stuff about the market. You've got to, you know, learn stuff about the industry, become an expert in that industry um, to be able to prove to that company that, you, you know, your product will do well. Um, so there's that part of it. Um, I'll stop right now. Is there anything like any, any, questions anybody had I'm just kind of rambling on um, with uh, with what I know about it and um, I'm just pretending I'm talking to someone completely new I know a lot of, I know a few of you know a lot of about this stuff um, some of you may not so I'm just pretending as if I'm talking to somebody that doesn't know anything about it just so you guys know um, do you guys have any specific questions or things you want me to address on the topic I have a question about provisional patents Ryan yeah uh, because of the frustration I'm experiencing now with not getting someone to make my product, uh, I'm now about seven months into my provisional patent. I also have a provisional patent on my second item, which I haven't done anything on. And I think that's going to go well beyond the year. I know I got notification from the USPTO. I had to file something after six months to show that I'm, I'm working on it. But can, is there a way to extend it beyond the year? Or do I there need to are, start patenting it? There is, that's a tricky one. And one thing I'll say is with the USPTO and this whole patent and provisional patent stuff, there's no solid, it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray area. I've met people that said that they just around 11 months, they just filed a new provisional and slightly changed the product. Um, changed it enough to where it could be considered a new product, if you will. So maybe um, you could put some little cut here or there or make it a different shape. Um, but that's a, that's, you know, don't take my word for it. Definitely talk to an attorney about this because that's, um, you know, if you get kind of caught by the USPTO doing that, they, they can like kind of expunge both of them or whatever. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but that's what I've heard somebody doing. I think you can do some sort of an extension, but it takes an attorney to really know how to do it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, but Mike. Uh, if you if you file utility uh, right now, it will cost you uh, just uh, if you do it even yourself, just filling form and pay mandatory search fee it will cost you until uh, end of September uh, four hundred ninety dollars. I'm sorry, and that's to file for what? Uh, for utility. The different utility. To, to file utility patent on your on your on your uh, creation. So if basically what he's saying is if you don't want to try to extend the provisional or something, if you just want to say, hey, you know what, I'm just gonna go go for the patent and file for a utility patent, 
Uh, were you, Mark, were you saying it will cost $490? Uh, USPTO proposed an increased fee starting in October. Oh, okay. interesting. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, filing yourself will cost you $490 total. And with, are you kind of referring to the pro se thing where they'll help you file your own patent? Uh, that is free, you know, that's, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, work with uh, uh, Jim Kirk. He just said, you know, oh, just go there, apply for, for account there so you can pay for that yourself and you, you can fill the form. You're smart enough. So and that so, would mean that? that so, would mean uh, so I did it. I did okay. it in November. And so you wrote the patent yourself then, is that what you're saying? Yes, I wrote, I, wrote, I, I have a good template for that, you know, for, I wrote, he look, look over just to see if, if I missed something. But, uh, okay. So yeah, that would take, that would take writing your own patent basically or getting help writing it or, you know, something like that. But that is an option to, to go ahead and file your own patent before your provisional runs out. I'll start, uh, I'll start spending it in three months, I think. <laughs> by, the, by the way, uh, by the way, uh, uh, I'll tell you where lawyers get their money. When you get into office action because of something missing, you have to file, uh, you have to file your original plus changes, plus, uh, plus changes over changes, you know, and yeah. it's, it's growing. But for filing that kind of documents for uh, charge your phone so much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. But in, in, initial uh, is uh, yet affordable. Good. So aside from, uh, if anybody knows, Brian, if you know, aside from just letting the, you know, you got a few options, let the provisional just expire and move on to the next idea or extend the provisional patent somehow, maybe refile something, do something a little tricky, um, or file the patent. Um, is there any other options out there besides those three does that, that anybody knows of? Or get it, or find a licensee within that time period. That's the other thing. You could you know, start hitting the phones and hit the internet and see if you can find someone that will license the idea. That's obviously a, a big option too, you know. That doesn't help on the patent itself because they could license it and, well, okay, disregard, I understand. Yeah, and one, they could, so, and often if you get a good license deal, they'll pay for the patent and help you write the patent or you guys can work together and create the patent. So then you have some money backing you up and some people in the industry backing you up. So, um, and as long as you don't sign all your rights away and all your exclusivity away, then you could actually have royalties coming in and be able to still pursue it yourself, to sell it yourself and develop it yourself. But, so but as well, uh, as well as, uh, you know, if you, if you file and they did not uh, act on that, you just pray they will not uh, act on that long enough, so you will find listen, listen by that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, but it's already already utility uh, utility, so uh, you are protected. At least you're protected before they act. Mm -hmm. I'll be patient. What was that? I'll be patient. Yeah. <laughs> For a while. I know it's kind of yeah it's a, that's a tough one it's a tough one you wish there was some way yeah I, I file in November and uh, I pray they will get to my stuff in six years yeah that's the tricky part I I I, I don't care you know if you get to that in ten years I, I protest <laughs> yeah does that anybody else have any comments or questions on on licensing or anything about that? Emmanuel, Jay? Can I call you, Emmanuel, can I call you dudes? Nice. Well, if no one has questions, I do. Yeah, go for it. Um, Brian has to do with your licensing. Yeah. Oh, um, well. Ties in line with what we're saying. I mean, I know that we've spoken in the classes regarding mine that I can license it for, for school districts or gyms or men haberdashies, dashers, whatever they're called. Um, 
is that just a matter when you sit down when someone's interested that you list out the different categories and then they negotiate each one separately or combined? Um, yes, in your mind, uh, you should have se uh, several uh, category. You prepare to do license, but each individual or each uh, organization came to or co will come to you. Uh, then you learn about that industry. What is your string? Where is your market? If the if the guy is only selling to school supplies, or a government agency, bingo. Then you say this is your string, this is your market share, and this is your focus. I'm glad you're coming, and then I would like to license you on this specific uh, area you're master about. So then you get you license to them. And later on, the guy say, I only distribute to um, online, online retailers. Maybe Wayfair, maybe Walmart.com, maybe Amazon.com, maybe Jet.com, which is Walmart.com now, and Target.com, wonderful. Or if they are also selling to Walmart brick and mortar, so we will cut a deal to uh, we call consumer product in the mass market and e-commerce sign the deal. So now you have two licensee. Today, uh, I, I, I also want to bring up this because there is a student made the call to me um, last week and worry about manufacturer overseas. How can I deal with manufacturers when I uh, selling to the US the same time? I'm worried about my manufacturer is gonna knock me off. This is a licensing strategy kick in. Go to man your manufacturer, approach them. Hey, you are manufacturing this product for me. You must be in this industry and you must have other clients from other country because you are a so-called powerhouse uh, for consumer product, which is the country of China. So do you have any other clients? He said, yes, I have somebody from Middle Eastern, from Russia, from Europe, from Australia, from Japan, from Southeast Asia. So you say, okay, good. Uh, may I license to you? You have the right to sell to your other client and then pay me an annual fee. I don't even trust you. Obviously, that's between you and I right now. We're talking about, I, I, I can't, you, you can't trust them. You get the audit book because this is not US. So people may not give you the right book to audit. So why don't I just make a deal? How many uh, guesstimate? How many items? If I buy uh, uh, 500,000 pieces of a year from you, I assume you will sell another 500,000 pieces throughout other client of you, whether it's in Europe or whether it's in Australia, or Russia or Middle Eastern. So therefore say, why don't I do that? Assume you're gonna sell 500,000 pieces a year besides selling to me. Why don't I strike a deal? I give you a 5% based on your factory cost. And I, I will even give it a, a good deal. The first two years, I assume, you need some build up with client, whatever. So I, I gave you 3% on royalty. After two years, I increased to five. So that's called slicing as well. This is a call slicing from your back door. You back door to your supplier, let them make money for you. Rather only license to your uh, marketers. 
Okay, so I'm sorry, Brian, you're saying that that's the manufacturer that you're negotiating with there? Yes. The one who's yeah. producing it? And yes. Sir. Are you licensing with slicing with them originally or there? I'm just not sure of the of the the structure of you know who you're going to approach to license with. Who would I who would I directly approach with my paper good product? Would I go directly to a Walmart or to a warehouser or to a Kimberly Clark? Good question. One is called direct to distributor, which is Kimberly Clark and whatever who are the supplier to Walmart. But there is also another structure called license to retail. That means you license to Walmart, license to Target, license to Amazon to sell your stuff. They are going to find their own supplier, manufacturer to produce and then sell to them. They pay you royalties. So there's a license to distributor, license to retailer. The third one, I just mentioned it, license to suppliers. You have a three major big category, you can licensing them. Okay. So for your, for your, for, for example, your Texans girl, if she's smart enough, she's a uh, well, good deal with you, being, sub, being, being very good, your product being successful. Guess what? People will find out who the hell making this little picture. Oh, the Texans. Can we buy from them? Compete with Mike? But if, if they buy from your Texan girl and only sell to the general public, like a, a B2B supplier, like Cisco. Cisco not only sell food, but they also sell uh, kitchen and bathroom supplier, supplying, uh, uh, supplies, bathroom supplies. So therefore, then license to your Texans girl, supply only to Cisco. Why not? Cisco is not going to compete with your price point in Walmart. Walmart's not worry about your Cisco distributors. Bingo. You can sell to Walmart at the same time, you license to Cisco. That's why um, well, I, sh I, I am still concerned and still uh, encourage the inventor need to be involved in business. You can't be naive in business because all this business deal require license agreement, require lawyer, require inspection, require auditing, require structure, and even require, un require you understand the market. Otherwise, you don't even know what to slice your, slice your idea to be able to be a licensor of licensing. And don't, do not believe you can sign a contract with the lawyer, with legal contract, with the licensing deal, then you can go back to sleep and the money will flood to your bank account. No, you have to be involved in the business. You have to understand how your licensing, licensee perform every year and you need to modify your design, modify whatever to support your licensee to sell more. There is no free lunches. There is no one contract covers right. all. <laughs> But however, that is what I want to uh, emphasize in this uh, Zoom and now. But, um, I would I really appreciate uh, Ryan kickstart the subject and bring up licensing to different marketers like a distributor, like. Um, Kimberly, uh, Kimberly Blur, uh, Kimberly Clerk, and um, Walmart and uh, Amazon. But in your back door, there's a suppliers. They have their own 
customer as well, license to them to sell to others as long as they're not competing with your client, not competing with your other license licensee. Uh, Brian, the question uh, in this case uh, concerning the IP. Is it uh, beneficial then to file, uh, for example, Chinese patent as well? What patent? Uh, for example, for my product to file Chinese patent. Chinese patent? No, Chinese. Chinese patent. Chinese patent. Chinese government, Chinese is a, it's a very, very, very wild animal. They are the beast in business. They are the beast to deal with in business because now they're very powerful. They are, they, 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 they are very, very strong. Uh, I think it, it is a very good reason to file a uh, Chinese pattern now. Although bear in mind, they may not work like a U.S. pattern. People may not respect your, uh, the law like people in the U.S. So bear in mind, even you have a pattern in China, it, it, it's not as a powerful as having a pattern in the U.S. They walk you over. So you say, Mark, come over to my country, sue me. What are you going to do? If you're, if you're not suing them, then why are you even file pattern? So you have to be prepared. I, I, if you believe China is a good market for, uh, for your product, I will do so. At least you have something to hold on to it. But I don't like to deal with Chinese with the legal issues. They, they, they got no legal uh, system to protect you. Mm. Even, I'm, even I'm Chinese, I speak the same language. Um, hey, but Brian. I know I answer to you or not, answer that to you. It's an ugly world. Well, even in the US, if after you file the US patent, if somebody knocks you off, are you gonna sue them? If you're not gonna sue them, then why the hell you file patent for? Same question. Right. And Brian, Brian has uh, taught some tricks about how to uh, minimize your risk in China, like working with your uh, manufacturer to give them a little piece of the deal for the Chinese market. Potentially, maybe they won't knock you off then or somebody won't knock you off as quickly. Um, so there's some little tricks that are kind of good to help. Um, uh, Jay wrote a question in the chat. Um, so I'll go ahead and say it out loud. Uh, so with all those options, what is really the best way to get your product out with minimum cost on our part? Also, what budget range are we looking at to spend in order to actually start making money ourselves? I'll start off real quick before Brian answers and just say, there's really no one answer to that. It depends, Thanks, on, a lot of, yeah, it depends on a lot of variables. Um, and it depends on the product and all that. But, um, you know, you kind of just have to learn, all, in my opinion, what I did was I learned all the different ways to bring a product to market, took all that information and started making decisions on the products I'm working on and which way I'm gonna kind of go. Um, so Brian, do you have a, so I'll read the question again. So with all those options, what is really the best way to get your product out with minimum cost on our part? Also, what budget range are we looking at to spend in order to actually start making money ourselves? Ryan, you already mentioned it. There is not a standard answer for it. But um, what, what, what what should I say? I don't want to discourage people. Uh, but like, why don't you tell people how uh, Calvin was doing with his, with his idea. He's only produced 200 of them, right? Tell the story about what uh, Calvin have done. So, yeah, maybe so I'll give you a quick backstory. Kelvin has, um, Kelvin knows about licensing. He's, he's tried to license some products. Um, and to, to answer your question real quick too, like I would say, you know, licensing is a good way to, to do it for cheap or submit your product to submission companies. The only problem is you're not you're you're spending less money, but you're not going to make as much money. And 
your chances of getting it to market might be a lot less too um, than other ways. So uh, Kelvin, who I'm kind of working with, he has attempted to license a few products before without any luck. Um, so he started working on it himself <clears throat> to bring his own product to market. And we're basically bootstrapping, meaning we're, we don't have a lot of money to, to buy a bunch of product up front. So we're just doing 200 units to start. It's a, it's a game idea or a toy. And um, we're just having to sort of make do with what we can find. We're taking a bunch of stuff that's already out there, that's already being sold and putting it in the same box and selling it as a, you know, as a, a kit, basically not a kit. Like we're not, basically we're not manufacturing any new product. We're taking a bunch of products that already exist and using those to make the game and then using our own time and labor to, to box everything up. And then we're also doing some other stuff that's not normal. We're basically doing everything we can to save money, but also have a viable product out there that people can enjoy. We're not sacrificing, you know, everything about the product. If um, you're doing it yourself, Ryan, how many cartons are you making? Or how many packages are you making? 200, 200 units. And you're gonna sell them where, please? Um, we're gonna, well, we're gonna sell them online, definitely. Um, if, if there was, um, fairs and, uh, swap meets open, we would be hitting those big time. And it's a really bummer that we can't get to those because I find that Kelvin's product is one of those things that when you see it, it doesn't really like, you know, you don't, you can't imagine how much fun it would be. But the second somebody gets that game in their hands and plays it, they have a great time. So it's really, a, it would really be a great product to be able to showcase in person to get the ball rolling. Um, but we're gonna have to make do on the internet and with videos and good marketing and advertising to really show people how, how fun it can be and then hopefully they'll buy it and try it. And then we're gonna, these first 200, the goal is not just to sell them and make money. Like we know we're probably not gonna be making money for a while, like profit, if you will, because any money we make will be going back, right back into buying more, more units um, to sell again. Um, but there's the big goal is to get feedback from people, uh, see how fast we sell out, see which places Data. online things sell out <laughs> fastest, and basically learn as much as we can with this first 200 so that way we can modify it for this for the next run and then also we want to track everything and track and get testimonials because after we sell this 200 we might be able to go to retail or go go to a retailer or go to licensees or an investor or lenders and say hey check this out here's the product here's all the testimonials here's the the feedback we've gotten people love it we sold out within a week um, so we're really also trying to do our best to, to, to gather all the information we would need to potentially right. sell the concept or license the concept out, you know? So, um, and if we don't, if that doesn't happen, we're still going to produce more, you know, and try to get lending and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it. And that's kind of like a hybrid thing, whereas we're producing it ourselves, but then we may also license it out after we produce the first run ourselves and prove it's basically market research and prove that prove that the product is good and people love it. Um, and to go to your other part of your question, Jay is like looking what the the budget range. Um, to, to 200 spend. units. What's that? 200 units to order. Yeah. So you can get um, all the research done. Yeah. It depends on the product. Like, there's so many little things to right. think about, like dealing with customs and hiring QC, QA people in China. And like one thing Kelvin and I realized, he's got a toy product that is potentially for kids and we have to get it certified by the, U the United States Consumer Protection Agency, basically, um, for kids under 13 or under 12, 12 and under, I think it is. Um, and that costs a couple thousand dollars. So. If you think about it, if you make a, a food product, if you're selling a food product and a toy product and maybe some other types of products, like there's some certifications you have to get before you can even sell. 
So a lot of like little costs here and there, you know, I'd say the, the I've read stuff too that says you should be spending an equal amount of money on like the actual development of the product as you do on your marketing and advertising. So when you're planning for this, don't just think about, okay, how much will it cost me to make 200 units? People say, you got to figure out how much those 200 units will cost. You say that costs $20,000. You should also be saving $20,000 for your marketing and advertising because you're, if you don't, you're going to make this product and then not have any way to get it out, you know, get the word out to actually sell it. Um, so the, it costs quite a bit, but again, if you have a great product and you do your research and you become an expert in that field and you're crafty, um, you could take it to market yourself by finding an investor. But, um, you know, I think I got kind of off topic. The cost would be a budget range. Like um, if you're going to get a patent, you're probably looking at at least 10, 20 grand if you have an attorney do it. And it could cost more than that. Like Mark said, if they start doing a bunch of office actions and fix, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and then if a mold has to be made to manufacture your product, you're looking at a few grand there, maybe five ish. Um, then for the actual products yourself, you got to pay for shipping. We found that shipping in some cases is actually more expensive than the, the product that we bought. So, you know, the oh. thing we bought was a dollar and to ship it, it's like one fifth, a dollar 50. So, you know, sounds like overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and most people, even still, even with shipping, most stuff is still the least expensive in China. Um, there's a lot of people that want to, a lot of Americans, inventors that say, you know, I want to make in America, I want to do all that, and this will be good for the country, and yada, yada, yada. And then they look at all the costs involved, <laughs> and they're like, well, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, so... You know, I was talking about this a couple of years ago. I saw this product that was a cool product, but they actually sold the, and this was like a, a time period where people were really, you know, doing the made in America thing. They really wanted to buy made in America. This company had some products produced in China and some produced in America. And when you ordered the product, they gave the customer the option to purchase the one made in America or the one made in, in China, but the one made in America was like five or ten dollars more expensive. Um, I don't know how well they sold the, the American one versus the Chinese one and how that all worked out, but it was an interesting concept. Um, hmm. You know, so anyways, the, I hope that kind of answers your question. If you have more like specific questions about like if you have a, a product and you wanted to hit me up or Brian or any of us and say, you know, this, this product kind of had tell us a little bit more about it. Maybe we can give you a better idea um, about costs and stuff involved. But uh, you know, that's, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. Uh, it, yeah. Sorry. I kind of threw out a tricky question there. No, no, I know there's a not a straight answer for that, especially with the field that we're doing. Yeah. But uh yeah, so I uh, just contact you with your email or yeah, um, or Brian or discovery call somehow. I'll put I'll put <clears throat> my email in there, and if you wanted to talk directly to Brian, we can I can give you his information. Uh, this last time, email. last time I was I wanted to ask. There's like so many program in uh, in the ideas to million, and they all uh -huh. kind of seem similar. So I don't know how to dif differentiate besides the, the pricing point. Yeah. So you I, get no, the turning key. Um, yeah. Because it's hard to know maybe which, which program to do based on which product you're doing or which direction you want to go. Um, so I can see what you're saying there. And uh, yeah, again, I can kind of, you, you can, act, you can email me and we, I can, you can contact me and I can give you some advice or, um, or, you know, if you want to talk to Brian directly, I'm sure he would be able to answer, help answer some yes. questions. I've nice. done pretty much all of the, all of everything he's teaching. I have gotten like probably, I don't I think 80% of it or something. So I, <laughs> I have a pretty good insight on what 
you know good what good. Uh, what uh what class and Ryan is very knowledgeable about uh licensing and licensing I think she <laughs> he, uh, he uh he 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 can uh, give you a lot of insight and meanwhile just because uh, uh Ryan's also um understand the market understand the distribution channel so um licensing uh, is not that difficult uh, for for him to deliver his understanding or his uh, his message knowledge yeah so I think I think he's done a wonderful job and and, and also he's also helping people uh, among our, our student like uh, Calvin uh, to to de develop the toy item uh, when 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 he and Calvin able to deliver the product in the market and making himself a little well known. Sometimes you may not even need to approach people. People will approach you for licensing right. All right. Yeah. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Mike, uh, do me a favor, check on your email, find out whether you have it or not. I sent you a AliExpress manufacturer who doing all this Toilet seat paper. You can approach them to to uh, to ask for prototypes. Much much cheaper. Okay, so I just I have it. Thank you. So I just contact them and ask them about making me prototypes. Yes, tell them you have a different drawing. You may have different cut, but if they need to make a prototype dies, you're willing to pay for it. It's very cheap. Okay, thank you very much. I will be back in touch with you just to make sure I don't give my idea away. Um, you already filed, uh, filed the U.S. patent. Tell them you already filed the U.S. patent. So don't you ever knock me off. Otherwise, I tell Don, Donald Trump to sue the hell out of you. I'll okay. tell Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, uh, out of, uh, out of uh, just a comparison, I'll give you uh, my sources local in Orange County. Uh, they do uh, die cuttings, big, big pieces. They make the uh, die rouge. Uh, tools and uh, they, so uh, you can you can you it's possible to make prototype here not 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 products. Well, I I can make my own prototype, but it's made out of butcher paper as opposed to the one thousandth of an inch paper. You can you can you can talk with the guys in uh, plastic and metal center, for example, in I Lake would, Forest. I would love any of that information. Plastic and metal center in Lake Forest. Lake Forest. I'm sorry, what's the name of the company? Plastic and Metal Center. Plastic and Metal Center. Center. You, you can talk with Fera or you can talk with Nick, his son. Uh, and uh, well, uh, uh, they're not cheap, but you will not be disappointed with the prototype. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I, 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 uh, Mark, thank you very much. That's what I hope to see uh, among our students and among our friends. We share resources, we share hope. That's how, uh, I, that's what I really appreciate. Thank you very much, Mark. It's one of my original vendors. I worked with them for the last gosh, 20 years already. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. You know, um, Emmanuel and Jay, have you guys gone back and looked at some of the other Brian's other videos that he's he has produced yes. um, on the stuff? Because one of the biggest things I learned from Brian was it gave me kind of a thirty thousand foot view of <laughs> how this all works. You know, like I didn't know all the ins and outs of you know customs and all that kind of stuff I was explaining. And when you you know you source a product and then you negotiate. And they ship it. You got a QA and QC in China, and what can happen, and putting how to do packaging and putting your barcode on there, and you know how to design a, a box for retail or a packaging for retail. How many packages can you fit in the shipping carton box, and you know how they come over. You know, all that, all the little details on how this works um, to get a product made and bring it over yourself. Um, was a really good experience and then also knowing the licensing part um, it gave me a really good overview of like the whole thing so then I could start piecing things together um, and I think he goes over some of that stuff in uh, some of the videos he's already produced um, right and 
you know, I think the, the, the value I got from working with Brian was the one-on-one, some of the one-on-one feedback I got on some of the courses that you can take if you get a little bit more one-on-one, you know, help. Um, but, you know, really knowing that, that overview of how everything works was that was like what changed the game for me because all I knew was little bits and pieces like I knew about licensing and then I kind of knew about retail a little bit but there were so many other things like if I were to, I, I had no idea how to produce a product myself and how to source and stuff like that so my advice to you guys is just keep learning all the different methods keep learning licensing keep learning how to pr- produce a product yourself um, how to get a product shipped from China and how to do quality control, you know, all those little steps in the process. Um, once you know what all the steps are, then you can start getting better at each of them or learning more about each of them. And then after you have that good overview, you'll be able to decide better which way you want to go with bringing your product to market. Cause then you can, you know, everything you can go, you know what, doing the product myself looks like a pain in the ass. I think I'm just going to try to license um, because, right. <clears throat> you know, or vice versa or the other way around, you know what, this is a great product. I want to find investors and I want to, you know, I want to do it all myself and, you know, go that route. So right. that's kind of, if I can simplify, you know, a kind of a mindset for it, that's I understand. how I would look at it. Right. That's, that's probably what you're doing right now here today is just learning as much as you can. Yes, originally I I'm exploring all about the licensing part because you know fun is really difficult on my on my side. So um, I've signed up with uh, other um, inventing community also, kind of like yourself. Uh, I kind of have the same background as far as you know what we're trying to achieve. Um, but I don't know about manufacturing and uh, sourcing and all that. So. I found out about uh, Brian's thing with uh, Emmanuel, and um, that's the other side of the the deal of you know as inventor, and uh, I haven't explored much about it until you know I I, I seen Brian and uh, I, I like his passion and um, since he's also Chinese, he would know more about it than you know anybody else in the market as far as uh, you know inventing goes. Definitely. So I looked up his program and uh, I'm very interested. And he also live in California, a little bit yeah. ways to me. I'm here in uh, Northern California and you guys are in the South. And, nice. But I would love to work one-on-one just to, to see, you know, to absorb all the things that I need to absorb. So I know what to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's no, that's great. That's perfect. Exactly. And one thing Brian, one thing Brian had us do, which I thought was a really great experience was, um, you go on Alibaba and, or AliExpress and you can contact some manufacturers. Let's say, you know, that you need a certain part for your invention, right. like a little plastic piece. Um, you can go on there, find manufacturers and contact them and say, you know, can you, I want to get one of these and you can just kind of practice <clears throat> talking to them. It doesn't hurt. You know, they're, they're just going right. to give you the price and you're going to learn how they work and right. um, learn how they talk. And, you know, actually uh, having the, a file. Yeah. Actually having a file on LinkedIn, I have all this Chinese contacting me and I don't even have anything to say oh, to yeah. them yet. <laughs> yeah. Know? I mean, if you want, I'm like, Oh, we'd like to produce your, your product for you yeah. at a very low cost. And I'm like, Dude. okay. Do a practice part and just, you don't have to sign any contracts or buy anything, right. but just and see, how it, see how it works and get, it. Get, a, get some quotes and start right. negotiating a little bit. And, you know, it's right. not like, yeah, so it's, that, that's been a great experience just because it gets you comfortable with it. Right. Uh, and you learn a lot about what the factories can do and can't do and all that. And the representative is very, uh, very important if you find out a good one. Uh, I have a personal experience working with the, uh, uh, China and India on some uh, bead casting. It's a pieces for meat grinder. Meat grinder. And not necessarily uh, invention, you know, but still, you know, 
uh, some spare parts for existing meat, meat grinders in the supermarket and uh, uh, they are notoriously old and broken, need to be replaced. Uh, we get a wrong representative in India. Uh, the guy uh, find out some casting company which bought my uh, drawings uh, so we didn't get uh, right samples, we got uh, just giant paperweight. <laughs> uh, with Chinese companies, we start work uh, after that, and uh, unfortunately, COVID, you know, uh, mixed up everything, you know, all the communications uh, suddenly got broken, and they say, oh, we can produce, uh, then they cut out. Mm. Yes, uh, then they say, oh, the quantity. Uh, so, project kind of hanging, you know, but uh, hopefully by the end of the year we'll do some of uh, that, but. Good stuff. Hey, uh, Jay, where, where, you, you, you were talking about you were in Northern California, right? I'm in, I'm in San Francisco. I see. I originally moved from uh, Florida. I almost uh, joined the Art Center College of Design because I wanted to be an industrial designer myself. Nice. But um, it seems like a com commute is better here in San Francisco than uh, in LA. So I decided to go to the Academy of Art here. So I have a little bit of background with industrial design. And um, I, I believe you, you went there and <laughs> you're right. To to the art art center college of design, right? Yep. Before you even graduate, you're already making money with your product. That's kind of my dream, but <laughs> along the way, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, what what product do you have? You you might talk about a little bit if if you feel sure. Okay. Sure. Yes. Yes. Of course. So as a you know as an industrial designer, we we want to be broad with our ideas, but um. Um, right now, I'm focusing on um, um, cleaning, cleaning supply, cleaning tools, and also um, office exercise equipment. Since now it's even more better that uh, people, you know, people are <laughs> stuck at home. <laughs> I was just gonna say so, that anything. Well, even home even office. at home, even people yeah. at home, they still working. So yeah. that could be right. also a good product. Continue with this. Don't give yes. up. Yes, uh, people no. still need to do exercise. No, I have, and I, uh, and uh, so far I try to minimize the um, the material, the product, uh, and uh, just you know, if I can uh, Frankenstein some items together, right, and uh, lower the cost if I was to produce it myself rather than putting some electronic parts, which is gonna, <laughs> I don't think I could produce it because <laughs> it's gonna cost more. Yeah. But cleaning supplies and um, for cleaning and um, exercise equipment for office, for office worker. Nice. It's mainly my two main uh, objective to, to, to bring out. And Jay, do you do, do you do industrial design for clients as well? Um, I only took a semester, unfortunately, <laughs> I could only afford a semester and yeah. I'm already, you know, yeah. deep no, into I, that. <laughs> when Brian, I never even knew about industrial design as a major, like I didn't even realize what it was. I just thought it was product design, you know, I just thought it was called product design. Then I learned about industrial design and I started learning right. and watching videos and trying to teach myself everything I possibly could. And I find it fascinating because it's, um, you got to know a little bit of everything, like you right. said. Make right. it as little material as possible. Make it as strong as possible. Use the right material. Te make the right shape. You know, it's cool. Te Very cool. Technically, I can do it by hand, but you know, all the concept by hand. But I have no um, resource as far as software. And uh, one of the software I really want to get a hold of is Keyshot. Mm -hmm. And that's like <laughs> tens of thousand dollar already. Oh, just really? For that. Dang. I mean, Rhino is expensive too. It's like a couple of grand. I mean, for me. Yeah, but, no, it's expensive for me. It's not cheap. So, um, yeah, for the 3D modeling, yeah. rendering items. But um, 
Yeah, I'm not giving up. This is this is my dream goal. If you can do a good <laughs> sketch, if you can yes. do a good sketch, you can have it 3D modeled for you by someone on Fiverr or something for cheap. You just have to have really good sketches. That's one of the biggest things Brian taught me is hiring people to do the stuff right. that you can't. And some of those people on Fiverr have access to all that, all of that software. So if you can do really good sketches and you can yes. communicate your concept to somebody, they can do it for you, you know? And if right. you didn't want, if you don't want the whole, like, let's say you don't want to tell somebody your whole idea online, like you can sketch the different parts and have different people do different parts. That way you're not <laughs> giving away your idea, your concept. That's a, that's a nice tip. Yeah. <clears throat> Me and dudes are actually trying to build up a team. <laughs> so we ah, found nice. already uh, uh, 3D artists and uh, marketing artists also to make a video. Perfect. Nice. That's huge. So, That's great. I, I've done the same thing with a few inventors. Um, try to build a little network, a little team. I've learned that a lot of the successful products we see out there were done by multiple people, not just by one person. It takes group effort, you know, different talents and I think that's oh, awesome. kind of like you and Brian at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I so you're 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 not a friend, huh? Okay. I just send everyone my gift. Uh, it's a, a bundle of my digital product, uh, the idea journal and uh, uh, little ebook, Inventors Factory Blueprint. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. R. It's, it's a, a, a this is a methodology I use for last about thirty eight years. Never fail me. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll check that out. Beautiful. Sorry, you were asking something, Mr. Singh. I saw you're the you're the friend of Mark. Is that what you're talking? With uh, dudes with Emmanuel. Oh. We just met on LinkedIn, so we just really? kind of chatted. Yes. Oh, okay. And I, I haven't even heard about you, but then I, as soon as I found out, man, I, I really need to see this guy <laughs> because of the background you 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 have. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, yes. I, I wanted, I it's wanted really to inspiring for me because I, I kind of relate, you know, being, uh, you know, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I understand completely what uh, you're trying to do, Mr. Singh. And hopefully sometime in the future soon, I, I can be there too. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Same no problem. way with Brian. With Ryan. No, the future is now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one of the, Every second. <laughs> one of the greatest things I talk about with Brian is, um, you know, I have a lot of, I'm part of a couple, not groups, I mean, just friends and whatever of inventors and we try to help each other out. Um, but Brian, Brian's talent. I miss that. Yeah, I miss that community, you know. Brian's huge in the sense that he's an inventor, industrial designer, but he's also a great business person. He brought the product to market himself, ran the company, ran multiple. He's the complete companies. package. Yeah, he has the, he has the sales. He has <laughs> From the, A to Z, like you yeah, said. Yeah, <laughs> the business. Because, like he's saying, I'm. I mean, the longer I'm learning about all this stuff, the more I find out that it's less about inventing and more about business and you know you can have a great freaking product that could change the world but if you don't I, have I just, business smarts you know i just remember something watching you you said that um you in the beginning you thought oh, all you need is a good design and then that will take care of itself <laughs> but then that's not it <laughs> no i mean <laughs> until you find out with brian yeah so that's, that's kind of yeah. like me too yeah i totally disagree about good design <laughs> you might have, you may uh, uh, bump upon needs of something, and design not yet exists. But you need to collect all requirements uh, to cover these needs. Yes, all that's... creation, all your creation based on three major things: requirements, <clears throat> fulfillment, uh, functionality to fulfill these requirements, and limitations. When you master of these three things. Every creation you make would be 100% perfect. Engineer not allowed to say everything could be 100% perfect. And it's uh, <laughs> true. Nothing could be perfect 100%, except if you collect these requirements yourself and collect 
and find out functionality to cover the requirements. To fulfill these requirements, your creation would be 100% perfect on that set of requirements. And you need to master your requirements first. If you don't, you will uh, get to circle of a trial and errors, <laughs> trial and errors, like like the dog, you know. <laughs> yeah, which, yeah. You bring up a really good point because one of the one of the things I started doing that really helped was when I came up with an idea. Um, instead of just going straight in and sketching it or whatever, I started writing down all my requirements for what this thing had to do. And then I started writing down, you know, what materials it probably has to be. And I wanted to, to write down all the features, like how I'm going to sell it. Um, I wanted to write down about how much it's going to have to cost from the manufacturer. And I just, you know, I would write pages of kind of, you, you wow. reminded me by saying requirements. I'd write pages of all these things that that I need this to be, not just thinking of the actual design of the thing, but thinking about selling it, thinking about manufacturing, thinking about shipping, all those things. And then once I wrote all that stuff down, it made it a lot easier to like hone in the design because I could think about the whole picture, not just, Actually, you know. Actually, uh, the methodology you will see in the book uh, consist of uh, uh, five tables and uh, one formula. And it's uh, literally universal to whatever you do. Would be your business, would be your product, would be your service. Everything is based on uh, these uh, three things. Two things about, uh, about uh, requirements. There is a mandatory requirements without the, uh, them uh, system not existing. And there is auxiliary requirements. Uh, that is your quality. So wall could be uh, green, uh, black, white, that quality. Uh, wall could be uh, wooden, uh, brick, uh, cement, that's also quality. So that auxiliary requirements. The existing of the wall in certain place, that mandatory requirement. Uh, Jay, I, I want to continue to talk to you later on, if, if I may, in some way to help you to launch your product. It is important not to give up. And even it, during the pandemic, I, 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 I truly believe uh, the office uh, exercise equipment could be a, a home office uh, equipment can be launched. Right now, lots of people buying home, uh, buying a home, how do I describe? Buying a home uh, office uh, 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 product. Even toy company like uh, Fisher Price, they are making a toys right now. They just launched a toy line called Stay Home Toys. Right. Mother, mother uh, and father stay home working. And while the kids also stay home, not going to the school. Very, uh, so they launch a line of stay home toys. Wow, you should have a stay home equipment, exercise equipment. So think about that. That is a good direction to go. Yes. Um, well, well, you 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 have uh, your email uh, opt-in, in, right? So you might uh, uh, you know what? I'll write it down here also. Why don't you no? Why don't you uh, uh, a t uh, chat put into your uh, phone number and an email address later on? We can talk. There's a chat uh, icon. Right, right, right. Yes, you can use it. Uh, Mike, do me a favor. Uh, Spend some time to learn how to deal with AliExpress. Those people, they don't require a million pieces. They only require you to do a thousand or less than a thousand pieces. That's what I order my uh, cup holder sleeve. You know, my, my coffee, right, 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 right. coffee cup sleeve. I only make <laughs> less than a hundred pieces. Yeah. I don't mind ordering a lot. 
because I want to distribute them for your suggestion to the school districts and to the urologists and to the pediatricians. But not, uh, not a million pieces. Come on. No, no, no. But a million pieces equates, you know, there's 250 <laughs> in a box. I mean, I'm not arguing with you. I hear what you're saying. But I want to be able to distribute them so I can get the, the praises and the information, hopefully. But thank you. I will look at all the, all the express like you suggest. Yeah, please do so. This is a good, a good opportunity. Yeah. I thought I thought you already work on something like that. But however, if you run into a problem, I do have an agency in China I can introduce to you. She may be able to work with you and you just pay her whatever when you launch your product, just you pay her some percentage, very minimal. I would love that information. I'll call I'll contact you separately. And she speaks very, very, very good English. So you have a no uh, 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 communication uh, issue. Thank you. That's good information. I think we lost Jay, right? No, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. I'm uh, just typing something. Just turn <laughs> off the video. Mikhail. <clears throat> I've been trying to get in for uh, over an hour, and it just popped up all of a sudden. Interesting. I'm sorry, yes. but the, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, I literally was, I just was doing other business and all of a sudden it just popped up. I'm like, what? I've been, I tried like signing up three different times and closing the window and reopening and entering the password. Nothing was happening. I even sent you a text. That happened to me last week. Exactly. Just like that. I couldn't get in. It's not like a direct link. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we're well, we here to, now. We had to put a few extra uh, security, like a few extra steps to make it more secure because we had um, a meeting get hacked. So we had to do it a oh. different way. One of our first meetings, actually. Really? Because oh. yeah. last week I didn't have that problem, but this week I did. But it's all good. Nice. But I, I literally was trying from about 10 minutes after 6. And I yeah. gave up about 15, 20 minutes ago, and all of a sudden it just popped up. I'm like, what? There, there is a two uh, hyperlinks inside the website of Idea 2 Million. Uh, next time you do that, you click one, doesn't work, you click the second one. One I way did. or the other is going to work. Zoom. Uh, I did both. I did both. I even went to your website. All right. If that's the case in the future, just call me. Don't text me because I wasn't even uh, having my phone. Shit. All right. No worries. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, tonight we talked about uh, download. Yeah, I put some stuff stuff there. Download it. Oh yeah, look in the chat. Uh, from Mark. Uh, uh, Mikhail, tonight we talked mostly about uh, licensing and slicing. Okay. Brian, do you put these meetings up in the YouTube or anything, or you? Well, this would be recording, so I will put into a uh, idea to million uh, YouTube channel. Okay, cool. I don't see anything in the chat. Uh, let me. I'll I'll try to copy it and paste it. This is okay. It Mark. might be it might be because I'm just joining. So yeah, yeah. That could be it. Mark, do you want to post it again, or you want me to copy and paste? I actually can uh, save chat and. Uh, Send it, uh, send it to everyone. I save chat. Uh, so, so what was the difference between licensing and slicing? Um, well, they're kind of two of the same, similar things, but basically, you know, you hear a lot about people talk about licensing, um, but Brian kind of taking a different perspective on it, came up with the word slicensing, like a pizza or a pie, so that you're not just- that. I think he uh, talked about that in the live class once. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And it's basically, a lot of people, when they, when they do licensing or they like try to find a licensee, they'll sign away exclusive rights to that licensee, and now they don't have any control of their product at all. They can't, you know, keep a piece of the market for themselves yep. but if you slice and you can keep you know you can have one part of the pie go to your licensee 
maybe part of the pie go to another licensee, another part of the pie you get to keep for yourself to bring to market yourself and produce it yourself. Um, and then there's a few types of licensees Brian was talking about tonight, like um, uh, re like retail, retail, I forgot the other one, that, uh, oh, the retail, supplier, the manufacturer. Retail, license to distributor and license to manufacturers. Right. So basically, instead of just going one direction, you're being smart and using this one product, you're being able to make money in a lot of different channels. Um, lic you're licensing some of it, producing some of it yourself, maybe white label, you know, a few different things. So that's the, that's the main concept. What's the, what's the difference between, uh, and on your concept, Brian, what's the difference between retail and just distribution? Uh, when you say distribution, like a Kimberly clerk, so they are the manufacturer, they distribute. So you can license to them as a distribution. So they, they, they are allowed to sell to Target, Walmart, Amazon. But if you go to direct to retail, you license to Walmart. So Walmart will assign the licensing deal or Amazon will sign the licensing deal from you, but they don't necessarily buy from you. They buy from their existing suppliers. Yeah, like a kind of print on demand thing. Uh, yes, but, but, but Walmart, it's, Walmart still is very huge. So they can actually, uh, so when you sign a license with Walmart, Walmart supplier normally would not knock you off because they don't want to ruin the reputation. So that yeah. give you a have much better control. For example, if your drinks, you can license to the uh, manufacturer making drinks, then they can distribute to everybody. Or you can license to some retailer or restaurant uh, chain manufacturer. For example, you license to a, um, what was a, a steakhouse we talk about? Uh, any steakhouse, a chain store in the steakhouse, they have a bar, they have something you can make. Um, you can, they can make the bottle they can, under your name, whatever under your formula, but they, they want exclusive right from you. So therefore, besides buying from Loose Crest, right? Is that the, uh, the, the, the steakhouse sure. store? So they, they, they can only go to, the customer can only go to Ruth Chris to drink your drink, but nobody else, but you make money out of it. If you understand what I'm saying. Sure. It's a little harder in my area because you have to figure out, I would have to figure out legally how I could slice things up and if you could do stuff online or not, but yeah. I mean, the only reason COVID-19 is good is you can actually do uh, alcohol online now. Oh, nice. Woo! That is exciting news. Yeah. Beer, beer, wine, alcohol. Uh, you've not been able to do that online before. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but like even if you're doing Uber Eats or DoorDash and who knows how long Uber Eats will stay around because – even DoorDash and all that might go away because of AB5 and and the and losing the lawsuit here in California because pretty much you know our government's in bed with the unions. But uh, until it goes away, you can still order drinks along with your food and they'll deliver them. Wow, that's a big. Yeah, it, it, it's a big uh, change because of COVID-19. The only good thing I think is so most most breweries right now to stay alive, they've been doing to-go orders and you can come pick it up. But you can ship anywhere in California and most places are only charging like 20 bucks to ship it to you, which which is pretty good if you're getting a case or whatever. Uh, ship to your door and it's fresh, you know? Uh, interesting in this case, can we... Uh, borrow the big uh, dis uh, distill cube uh, from Bowers Museum, for example. They have original Spanish uh, <laughs> Spanish cube, <laughs> which fills the room. Uh, Spaniards brought the uh, brought it here because they make a medicine. I'm not sure what that has to do with alcohol, but 
No, it's, it, it is. It is. It is. It is, it is pure the, the device to to make an alcohol because that was original medicine. Nice. Um, pretty much, it's all about licensing with the ABC and the TTB first. If you have those, which most breweries, distilleries, and wineries do, then um, I mean, it's still like it. You still can't ship it to another state. It's still an interstate thing. So, but within the California borders, you can put it anywhere. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, you know, I know, I know the alcohol industry is a little bit different. Like you were saying, it's tough to do some of these things with your industry, with your field, you know, with this licensing. But I think that I just wanted to generalize the main concept of licensing is being smart about the deals you get into and don't just give exclusivity to one company unless you absolutely have to, unless you have no other route, just try to be uh, smart enough to, to give, give, you know, to work with your licensee to give them what they want, but also keep, keep some of the pie for yourself and, you know, have other avenues to make money off your one uh, product. I agree. Does Brian have a, a like a, a list on how he would slice it up and what they're called on the different types of licensing? I mean, he has gone through it. I think it's different for each product and different for each industry. Um, but he explained a few tonight. So like there's the three types of, you know, um, the manufacturer, the retailer, supplier. Um, and you can also white label too. Like there's white label. I think there's, there's so many different directions, white label, private label. There's so many different directions you can go. Um, yeah, but over the over the past year year and a half he's gone over a lot of the, the ways i don't know if he has a list put together somewhere of them but um because there's so many different like you could technically call call an investor licensing you know um because you're that's just kind of part of the it's just like all your options you know and being smart about all your options and all the way different ways you could go at least that's kind of how i internalize it I got you. Uh, I mean, in the alcohol industry, you have the th the three tier system. So you have a manufacturer, uh, a distributor, and a retailer that gets you to you, the consumer. Yeah. Um, and I would say that's probably true. I mean, that's absolutely true for the alcohol industry, but it's from everything I can pay attention to everything that I've been knew before and especially since being into this group uh, it's very similar yep. well great uh you know what uh, michael next time we will we'll talk about if you have a question you can call me whatever since we we know each other very well uh, already uh wow. do me a favor if you have a question don't don't be hesitant to to to, to talk to me and um, but however, we are running to the end of the uh, of the uh, hour. Uh, we already <laughs> uh, so uh, we will need anybody have any question want to bring up for next uh, Zoom and I, I will appreciate it. But uh, today we're going to end. Oh, thank you so much. very much to, for everybody to be here, and you guys are great. Uh, bring up questions, bring up challenges, bring up the difficulty. If I can help. Uh, more than glad to help. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for doing this. Thank, Thank you very Brian. much. All yeah. right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Brian. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.